Okay guys, we have got us some dolphins and uh, I'm going to show them to you real quick here. They are off of our uh, starboard. So starboard is on the right and port is on the left. These are nautical terms for today. And uh, here we go. Them, but these are bottlenose dolphin. Whee! Nice little pod of bottlenose dolphin. Captain Steve's going to bring us close. So bottlenose dolphin um, are up to about 12 feet, and they are beautiful animals, just gorgeous. ride the pressure wave of the front of the boat and um, they're just uh, I'm gonna let you hear them I'm gonna be quiet just let you hear them breathe So these guys, these bottlenose dolphin are just, they're so smart and uh, just beautiful. They are up to uh, about 12 feet in length. This looks like a group of about 20, 25. And um, they, they're talking now. So they use, Captain Steve is explaining, they use two different ways to communicate. And um, uh, they can whistle. They have a signature whistle that is their name, and um, they also can eco-locate. So uh, they send out clicks, and those clicks is the original sonar system. Uh, the Navy did not was not the first one to design that. God designed that. So uh, <laughs> these animals are using this incredible sonar system, and they can see. I've been told that they can see up to a foot below the surface um, when there's sand on the floor of the ocean. And they can find a quarter um, down there. So uh, they can uh, tell when a woman is pregnant. Um, they can see a lot of cool things so with, that, with that sonar. Super fun. Some of you may not know this, but Dana Point is the dolphin and whale watching capital of the world. So last year we were blessed to receive the designation, the trademark as um, the dolphin and whale watching capital of the world. Uh, there were nine. Oh, God, there were nine criteria that we set forth.
So Dana Point received the designation as the Dolphin and Whale Watching Capital of the World because of nine criteria. One of them is that we see five species of dolphin uh, throughout the year. One of them is these beautiful bottomless dolphin. Uh, we see the common dolphin, the long and short beak common dolphin. Oh, they're going to do some tail slapping, which is another way they communicate. There's a calf in there, guys. There's a calf. Wow. They look so cool underwater. All right, so this is our illustrious captain, Steve, who has been on boats since he was, what, born? Yeah. Yeah. Steve has been on boats since he was born. He was actually uh, even homeschooled at one point while his family uh, sailed around the world. So he has got tons of experience, and we're blessed to have him. Steve is, um, now that we've seen those bumalo dolphins, he wants to get us a different group of dolphin, and so he's got his binoculars with him. Steve, can you give us a lesson real quick on how to use binoculars? How to use binoculars? Yeah. 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 So, uh, I always use mine with my sunglasses on, and I consider that to be really important because the, uh, the glare off the water may not seem like much, um, and it might just kind of hurt your eyes a little bit when you're looking through the binoculars, but if you do it over and over again over many years, it can actually cause serious damage to your eyes, so I always wear my sunglasses when I'm using my binoculars on the water. And the binoculars are always designed with two settings, with sunglasses on or glasses or without them. And so they'll twist like this and that creates a, a uh, sort of a little shadow box. You can put it right up to your naked eye and that puts your eye at the appropriate distance from the lens of the binocular for them to work and to give you a full uh, circle when you look through them. If you have glasses or sunglasses on, then you want to have them down so that you can put them up against the lenses, and then that gives you that same appropriate distance from the actual uh, lens of the binocular. Now, also, it can be difficult to hold them steady. Yeah. So what I like to do is uh, I'll get one one point of my body leaning on something just for safety and stability. Yeah. And then I'll sort of just uh, amble with the wave. You can see it looks like I'm swaying, but really it's the boat that's moving, and my head and shoulders are staying pretty level with the uh, the horizon. The and you the used a word you, that it's called, and it's called. Say the word again for everybody. Gimbal. Gimbal. So you guys <laughs> might not be familiar with that, but Steve is gimbaling. <laughs> and I know I'm expecting there to be some wildlife right in this area. So I'm looking around with the naked eye for anything that grabs my attention. I have a much wider field of view without the binoculars, so then I'll right. use the binoculars to get a closer look. So tell us what you're looking for. Yeah, so the word, the word is that there are some dolphins here, and they're common dolphins, so they're the small guys. And what we're looking for is any sort of uh, disturbance in the surface of the water that looks out of place. Uh, sometimes it'll look like a sort of a dark wind line. Uh, sometimes you'll see little splashes or little shapes. And if you're lucky, you'll see a big splash uh, or, or a whole dolphin shape jumping out of the water in the distance. That'll really give them away. But a lot of times you really just have to uh, sort of discern them from the surface of the water uh, if they're not jumping or, or being uh, particularly playful. Right. Very cool. That's an int that's awesome. Thank you for that lesson. We'll let you get My back pleasure. to we'll let oh, you yeah. get back to finding the animals.
So we did have a sighting, and it's of a balloon. And um, oh, there were a lot of balloons up here today. So we're going to show you what that looks like when we uh, when we find the balloon. Captain Steve's going to pull the boat right up to it, and Stacy is getting our boat hook ready. And um, we are going to spear ourselves a balloon. Can hear you. So, so we are going to uh, spear this balloon. So what happens is, it's not like anyone would ever come out here and with a balloon and release it. That's not the way it works. People are way over there on land, and they. Um, they, they either lose the balloon or they set the balloon free because it looks so cool to see it drifting up into the sky. But the wind current pushes it inevitably out over the ocean. And um, balloons blow, that's what we say. Balloons blow. So there we go. Let me get that. Oh, my. No string, and it's oh, you got it, you got it, you got it, you got it. She's got it. Yay! All right, Stacy, show us the back of that balloon. So, see that? It's all that paint is coming off, and pretty soon the whole thing's going to look like a big fat jellyfish, and that is something that the animals are going to want to eat, and then they get very sick. So. We like to pull them out when we can and uh, use it as an opportunity to not just clean up the ocean, but give people a, a better understanding of how not to let balloons blow. Okay, so Captain Steve, yay, he found us another pod of dolphin. These are different species. These are common dolphin and uh, I just love these guys. They're so fun. They're so fun and they love to come over to the boat and ride the bow. So here they come. Let me see if I can get you a better shot of that. Here we go. You can see them playing down there. Hi guys. <laughs> I love it. There's nothing like the thrill of seeing these wild animals coming towards you to play. You know, <laughs> There's just no other wild animal out there who races towards you, not to eat you and not to be fed, but to come and play. And um, it's just such a thrill. Hey guys, I love it. So uh, they are here on the bow. I love the bow of the Monatea because it's so low to the water and um, they're, they're just right here. They love this boat. It's, um, I think they like catamarans. They get a double push through the water. And uh, there's room on the front for everybody. So they do tend to buy for position when they're um, on the bow. It's kind, of a, it's kind of a good spot. Everybody loves it. And um, we have seen a little, you know, assertive action on the front. We go. So I am going. There we go. Hey guys. Hi. Look at that. <laughs> I love it. Wow, they're right under my feet. They're right under our feet, guys. Look at that. Hi. Right under our feet. I mean, where where else in the world can you go and have this kind of an encounter with wild animals coming towards you just for the fun of it? Just for the fun of it. It is such a blast. I love it. On a daily basis, year-round, because they live here.
We are so blessed. Here we go, guys. Can you see them? I love it. this, I just really want to encourage you, if you can't be out here to, um, whether you're sitting at your desk or wherever you are, take a deep breath and um, let it out. Use that imagination that God's given you and just pretend that you're on the water, that you are uh, out here getting some vitamin C, SEA. And, uh, and then go outside yourself if you can. Go out to your balcony or your yard or wherever you're at, your local park, and just get some um, get some fresh air and uh, get connected with nature. It is such a powerful experience that we can all share for free. And um, yeah, just whoa, these guys are are. Uh, they're battling over position here. It's uh, it's all about position for these guys right now, and the fun is on the bow. So who gets to be on the bow? Oh, we got another big blue, big look at now this. This one is almost completely looking like a jellyfish, right? Nice job, Matt! Woo! Woo! Professional balloon catcher. Put that on your resume. Look at how little paint's on it. Right? It's just about ready to get eaten. But not on our watch. All right, you guys, come on up now. Beautiful, beautiful. So. Back to you, you folks at home. Just really want to encourage you to get outside, get some fresh air, and um, take five minutes. You know, they say that if you can just take five minutes, you will get as much benefit as if you were outside for three, five, seven hours. 
a really uh, recent Stanford study um, discovered that. Five minutes of being intentional. So that means that you go outside and you walk through your, your five senses. So you're, you're going to go outside and you're going to say, okay, what am I smelling right now? Take a few deep breaths and exhale. What am I feeling right now on my skin? Um, is it is it cool? Is it is it is it wind? Is it warm? What is it? And how does that feel? And um, and then what do you smell? Um, what 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 sound, what smells of nature are you picking up? Um, what are you seeing? What colors are you seeing? And kind of start with where you're standing, and then slowly move your eyes, like like look down, and then slowly move your eyes out to the horizon and. And think about the distance between you and the horizon and everything in between. And just kind of let that sit. And, um, you know, what are you hearing? Uh, what are you hearing? And, and if there's some fresh, you know, like I was out on a walk this morning and I, um, I, could, I could smell some sage. So I grabbed a sage leaf and I just put it between my teeth and kind of chewed on it a little bit it's it's really sharp and um, sweet and it's so good for you um, and I just took it in so you know whatever you can do to connect yourself with nature is um, it can be very healing for you and uh, I think that God put it there for a reason so that we can we can get some healing and um, discover more about who we are so um, and who God is so it's it's good stuff okay so that was so fun super great group of common dolphin and uh, thank you Lord we are gonna head back now and um, head back to uh, Dana Point and see what we see on the way. Who knows? It's, uh, it's been a great trip so far. That beautiful pot of um, bottlenose dolphin and now this group of common dolphin. This is why they call Dana Point the dolphin and whale watching capital of the world. Because it is. Not too many places you can go out year round and see one, two, three different species of cetaceans within a two or three hour period. So we are very blessed. Okay guys, so we are heading in and it has been an amazing trip and um, just beautiful. We have actually picked up now over 10 balloons on this trip. Matthew's gonna be professional. He is a professional. Um, but this is uh, Captain Steve and my favorite um, view. So we're coming into Dana Point. There's the beautiful headlands. You can see them right there. And then in the background, you see that? That's Saddleback Mountain. And uh, Saddleback Mountain is Saddleback Mountain because it looks like a saddle on a horse. And then we've got these beautiful headlands. They think that the uh, the gray whales use this, this headland as a... Um, it's a marker for them as a, a point of reference when they're migrating down to Baja. So we do see lots and lots of gray whales every year, and we see them right here. I mean, they just come very close to shore, um, and they sometimes they just cruise right along the jetty. And then if you've seen some of our other virtual whale watching trips, you'll see that they actually sometimes come into the harbor, and that's always fun. So, um, beautiful trip, beautiful day. We'll be back out tomorrow. Tell us what you got there. Okay, so here we have our baleen whale model. It kind of shows how they eat. So when you open up their mouth here, this is their baleen. It is a structure.
structure similar to your hair or your nails. That's what it's made out of, some keratin. And what happens is they're going to take a big mouthful of water and food, whether it's krill or amphipods, depending on the species. And you see in here, this is inside their mouth, and they all get stuck in this baleen. It's kind of like a comb. And they take their tongue and they lick that off and they swallow it right down their throat and then push all that water and everything else out that they don't want right back out through that baleen. And what kind of whale is that? This is a gray whale. You can tell it's got all these barnacles on it. They get those when they're um, feeding and uh, down on the bottom. Gray whales feed on the bottom, which is different from most of our baleen whales. That's why they have a lot of these on there. And they kind of become hard and itchy, and you'll see a lot of times gray whales rubbing their noses up against things, um, trying to itch their faces, because those can be really itchy for them. Ah, very cool. Thank you. <laughs> Isn't she great? <laughs> okay, so these little guys are California sea lions. One way you know it's a sea lion, not a seal. Also, they have little ear flaps. See their little ears? These guys can get really big. They can be as big as 800 pounds. Super large. Yep. And um, they're actually uh, next to common dolphin. Uh, the second uh, most populous marine mammal. There are over 200,000 California sea lions off the coast. 200,000 of them. They eat a lot of sardines. Aren't they just so cute? Little babies over there. Scrapers around it. Um, it's uh, it's not a uh, commercial harbor. Uh, there are some smaller fishing companies, but for the most part, it is a harbor that is for recreation and um, for people who just want to come on down and relax and enjoy the beauty. So. I wish that you could be here. If you ever are in the neighborhood, stop by and say hi. So please leave your comments below in the um, comments. Let us know what you think. And if you don't subscribe to the channel yet, uh, please do subscribe. Push the little the little bell, and that'll tell you when we're doing our next uh, our next trip. So pretty out here. I wish you could all be here. Hey guys, it's Mrs. Captain Dave and Captain Dave. Hey! <laughs> and we want to give a special shout out. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Yay! Yay. Good job. Good job. We want to just take this opportunity to, again, say a happy graduation to some special people. Um, Stony Gate Elementary School, 6th grade class. Congratulations, you guys. 
hope you have a really wonderful summer and um, get to go outside and just enjoy the fresh air and um, have some fun. Congratulations. And we want to give a special shout out to some graduates who are near and dear to our hearts. Um, first and foremost, Ariel Anderson, our daughter. Congratulations. Congratulations, Ariel. We love you. Congratulations. And, uh, so proud of you. Yes. 2020. Good job. 2020. And then next, Sally Rose. Sally Rose, you're amazing. And Congratulations, gorgeous. Sally Rose. So blessed. Class of 2020. <laughs> to have you in our family. And then to some other special graduates. We have got uh, James. Uh, we have got uh, Abigail Rehard and Congratulations. Abigail. Awesome. So James May, Abigail Rehard, Abigail Dufour, uh, thank you guys for being a part of our lives. We're blessing you guys out. And uh, good job. Way to go.